You know, you know Jonah and the whale. So, but the whale that got away, Jonah's whale got away. You see, the only prophecy made directly by Jesus Christ about what was going to happen. And in that, he gave the example of Jonah. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, 40. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The sign of Jonah. What was that sign? Ahmed Didab. Now there's a man I wish I had had the opportunity of debating. Not because he was actually a particularly good apologist, but he was a tremendous showman. Showtime. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. And sadly, he's had a huge impact upon the entire next generation of Islamic apologists. So many have seen his videotapes and they repeat his arguments over and over again uncritically. He was not a scholar. Uh, he was not even an apologist. He was a showman. He was a showman. Even Prophet Jonah metaphorically referred to himself in a way as if he was dead when he was actually alive in the belly of the fish. Next slide. Jesus had foretold that he would be just like Jonah was in the belly of the whale. This saying is found in an early source of Jesus' sayings known as Q, which some scholars date back to the very decade of Jesus' ascension. As even a Sunday school child knows that Jonah was alive and not dead when everybody may have thought he was dead. In the same way, Jesus was clearly saying that he would be in the same state as Jonah, which means Jesus was also alive when everyone thought he was dead. Matthew added the time factor of three days and three nights to the word of Jesus, as it is a clear false prophecy attributed to Jesus. I would like for Dr. White to tell everyone here whether Jesus was alive like Jonah or not according to his own saying, and I would like Dr. White to explain how the time Jesus was allegedly in the tomb adds up to three days and three nights. And when you look at the fulfilled prophecies in the New Testament, they are always greater than that from which they were, they were derived. And so what you heard was, well, uh, three days, uh, these issues like that, you, you, you can only have what is found in the prophetic context. You can't have anything that is greater than that. Once you realize that that's an inappropriate thing being read into that, and the New Testament writers obviously do not follow that interpretation, then you see the problem. Um, uh, we were asked, uh, oh, I was asked, this is, this is such an easy one, uh, Zachary. It's, some, someone's going to think that I, I, I set you up with this or something like that. But you said, you said, Dr. White, explain how it can be three days and three nights. Now you already know the answer to this. You, you, come on. Uh, was that just stuck in the notes from some time back in the past? I don't know. But we all understand, and the only way to make sense of almost anything in the chronological uh, language of both the Old Testament and the New Testament, in Jewish reckoning, any portion of a day was considered a full day. And so we know. You know what the, you know what the, day, the name for the word Friday in the Greek language is? Preparation day. Even to this day. Paraskewe. It's preparation day. You know why? Because it's preparation day for what? the Sabbath, which is Saturday. So all the Gospels tell us the crucifixion took place on the preparation day, Friday, and we all know that when the uh, women come to the tomb on the first day, Jesus has been resurrected. Now how can that work? Well, part of the day is considered a day. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, well, wait a minute. Jonah said, you know, three days, three nights. Again, this is language that is utilized in the same way as inside and outside Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem could be a city, Jerusalem can be an area, Jerusalem can be a part of Judea. There's all sorts of different ways in which that takes place. And by the way, that's found not only in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament language as well. And so uh, how could it be three days, three nights? Because that's Jewish reckoning, just as you can explain the hour differences between the Synoptic Gospels and John is the difference between Jewish reckoning of time and the Roman reckoning of time. Jewish reckoning of time starting at sunrise, the Roman reckoning of time midnight, noon, like we do it uh, today. Two nights and a day. He said three and three. Three and three, he repeats it four times. And he's only giving you two and one. Again, he let you down. According to your scripture, Jesus failed again and again to support you. He's not supporting you. He's supporting me. He's supporting me. He's supporting me. Right. There is no way a logical thinking man can come away with Friday evening to Sunday morning being three days and three nights. Look, there's something wrong. Uh, if you have Christ going into the grave uh, toward the evening, toward sundown on a Friday, you have one day to the next night, which is Saturday night, Easter Sunday, has him already resurrected or being resurrected on Easter Sunday, three days and three nights doesn't work out. So if you put, okay, one night. One night. This would be one day. This would be sort of two nights and then resurrected. Somewhere. Somewhere early. Uh, Mark says, while it's still dark, the ladies went to the tomb and he was already gone. So even before sunrise. So how does that add up to three days and three nights? Really just one day and... Parts of two nights. It doesn't add up. There is, however, a more, uh, a better and an accurate New Testament chronology that has Christ being killed on Wednesday. On Wednesday, so all the Gospels tell us the crucifixion took place on the preparation day, Friday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday. That's what the Muslims trying to tell you, there's something wrong. Regarding 1 Corinthians chapter 15 predating Paul, I mentioned Q, that's almost as early as 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that Jesus said he will be like Jonah. Dr. White never mentioned, was Jonah alive or was he dead? Dr. White mentioned that according to Jewish reckoning, that three days, a part of a day can add up to three days. The problem is Jesus said, I will be buried in the earth for three days and three nights. So the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But in order to get out of this, Christians try to include Friday, but you can't. Because in Mark chapter 15, Jesus is buried after sunset which according to Jewish reckoning is the night of the Sabbath. So even if you count part of a day as a full day, Saturday and Sunday make two days, not three days. So it's a false prophecy. The Abingdon Bible commentary actually admits this is an error. So because Muslims believe in the beloved Messiah, Jesus, we do not believe he uttered false prophecies. This is the wording of Matthew, which is why Luke doesn't even mention this. He was talking about the time factor. I said, what is miraculous about the time factor? That's not a miracle. The miracle is when you expect a man to be dead and he's alive. That's a miracle. Three days and three nights wasn't responded to. Saturday night, the night of the Sabbath when Jesus was put in the tomb and Sunday make two days, not three days. So that's another false prophecy that Matthew put in the mouth of the beloved Messiah. I just want to elaborate on the when Jesus was asked for the signs of wonders and he said nothing but the sign of Jonah and uh, Zacchaeus spoke to you with regard to three days and three nights 
and you kind of said, oh, part of the day of Friday, part of the day of Saturday, and that's three days. Um, I know Zakir pushed on that saying, for example, he wasn't put in the earth until a Saturday. But what I want to understand is the three, even, the three nights. Where are the three nights? If, if he was putting on Friday, and so it's Friday night, Saturday night, uh, there's no Sunday night because it was Sunday morning when he was um, gone. So how do you understand that prophecy where Jesus made that claim that he would be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights? How, how do you reconcile that with the gospel narratives? The gospel writers themselves quite obviously did not have the confusion that has been introduced by words written 600 years later, uh, 600 miles away. Um, they show absolutely no embarrassment about this. They're very clear. They talk about Friday. They talk about Sunday. They use the words that identify these things. They have no issues with it. So they recognize when Jesus is talking about three days and three nights, he's talking about truly being dead and truly being buried. There is no way a logical thinking man can come away with Friday evening to Sunday morning being three days and three nights. He's not talking about chronological accuracy. He's not. People back then utilized temporal phraseology in a very different way than we do with iPads and iPhones and atomic clocks and things like that. Uh, this, is, this is very, very easily understood. By the way, uh, Jonah says in the book of Jonah, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jonah says in the book of Jonah that he descended down into Sheol. Um, I, I think Jonah was dead, and that's the connection. Uh, and that hence, when he comes forth, he's, he's been made alive. So the connection is very clear. Uh, he says he went down to Sheol. What is Sheol? Sheol is the realm of the dead. So there, I know there are many people who you know, prefer the idea of somehow being in the belly of a fish, breathing somehow. I'm not sure you know, how that uh, tank of oxygen got in there, but i um, not sure you know, how that uh, tank of oxygen got in there. I'm not sure you know, how that uh, tank of oxygen got in there. Uh, it, it seems much more uh, that he said he went down to Sheol, and that would be the connection. The point is that Jesus prophesied his own uh, resurrection, and that he had to have died in, in that process. So no one, no one was confused about that. Well, now we're going to get into debating and argumentation if we do that. Yeah. Just... Uh... Well, the, the prophecy says it's alive in the belly of the earth, not dead. Okay. He went first, down alive. First off, Dr. White said that they would have known what they were saying. Why is it in the plural? The only person who said the three days and three nights was Matthew. Nobody else. Matthew's the same uh, anonymous author that had Jesus riding into Jerusalem on two donkeys. Now, was Jonah alive? Everybody knows Jonah was alive. Here's Matthew Henry's commentary. Observe when Jonah prayed, when he was in trouble under the tokens of God's displeasure against him for sin. When we are in affliction, we must pray. Being kept alive by miracle, he prayed. You don't understand the feeling when Christians have to reinterpret clear texts just to try to get around the objections Muslims raise. David used the same language as Jonah in the Psalms that I quoted because in Hebrew language, get, coming close to dying and surviving, as my opening statement made clear, like Isaac, is a form of metaphorical death and resurrection. Even Prophet Muhammad knew me peace when he used to wake up. He used to say, praise Allah for raising me alive after I died. And the three days and three nights, Jesus was put in on what, we, what Jews call Saturday night, night of the Sabbath. So Saturday, Sunday, even if you take the full day, it's still two days. Clear-cut error. Now Christians have a choice. Either Jesus is a false prophet who died for your sins, or what the gospel writers are trying to put on the tongues of Jesus and is not always accurate. Uh, 
Uh, he says he went down to Sheol. What is Sheol? David used the same language as Jonah in the Psalms that I quoted. Dead or alive? Alive, 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 alive. Dead or alive? It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Was he dead or was he alive? Jonah was alive and not dead. But I said, the whale, the whale that got away, that whale came to the mouth of Jesus. Jesus spoke about Jonah and the whale. That miracle you, he didn't fulfill. Now, man, you bring a thousand prophecies to, to say it was justified, justified. I said, the one that Jesus gave himself with his own mouth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, 39, and 40. Now, I want you to explain that. That the sign he gave, what? that Isaiah so and so mm -hmm, nothing at all he said this is the only miracle I'm giving you to the Jews that what happened to him is going to happen to me did that happen that's all did that happen in a court of law if a man had made certain utterances I said this is the promise he made did he fulfill it again and again he's failing according to your explanation that you allow this whale 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 fish to get away out of your net not because he was actually a particularly good apologist Tremendous showman. This is what happens. Allah describes it to us in the Holy Quran. When truth is hurled against falsehood, it knocks out its brains. It knocks out its brains. It knocks out its brains. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا أَهْوَاءَ قَوْمٍ قَدْ ضَلُّوا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَأَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا وَضَلُّوا عَنْ سَوَاءِ السَّبِيلِ Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wallahu akbar.